Good morning. Just doing a couple quick segments on a day in the life of what goes on at the Long Island Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm on my way into work now. Last night, we had received an alert, uh, an email through Health and Welfare Council. They're pretty good at getting out uh, safety and health information to the community. Uh, and they had shared that it was going to drop below 32 degrees overnight, uh, which of course is always a concern because we are regularly supporting and working with people who are living outside. Um, so I had notified, uh, we have two different outreach teams. I had notified those teams about the weather drop and also the warming stations that were going to become available uh, in response to that weather drop. Today, I am going to, uh, I invited a, an, a volunteer uh, to learn more about the work that we're doing uh, at our office and in the community. Um, he doesn't know it, but he's being paired up with another volunteer that works uh, and helps us out in our boutique program. And both individuals uh, you know, are kind of going through it a little bit right now. Um, as all of you know, COVID has been tough for many, many people, and we're still kind of seeing the fallout of that. Um, so I am doing my best to create an opportunity uh, for these two to connect today uh, and potentially see if there could be uh, a problem-solving scenario where the two of them who are both facing housing instability can uh, see if they are comfortable with one another to potentially set up the opportunity to share living expenses and live together so that one can exit homelessness, one is in a shelter, and the other one is currently at risk of, of homelessness. Um, we are also, I'm going to be going out today to check in on some uh, people with lived experience uh, in the community. We have uh, a lived experience advisory group uh, where we create a space for monthly to get some feedback and insight about what's going on with people most impacted by homelessness uh, and communities most impacted by homelessness in the community. And we reimburse them for their time. Uh, so uh, in response to those meetings, um, I'm just following up with one of the uh, volunteers that comes with great insight into that space um, and will be uh, checking in on her and getting her a, a gift card uh, because we, we value what she, she brings um, and we know her time is important just like others. Um, we have some other staff on the team who are uh, attending uh, national uh, Capitol Hill advocacy uh, type efforts today through the National Low Income Housing Coalition. They're doing a conference related to uh, renters' rights and different ideas for how to protect uh, vulnerable populations and make housing more affordable. Uh, so this is a, a federal platform. Um, so we'll have some, some local uh, perspective there shared from what's happening on Long Island that can hopefully uh, start to prompt some uh, national level decision makers to think differently about programs, funding, and, and uh, different housing solutions. Uh, we have another staff who's working on a program, uh, it's called Insights, and the goal of Insights is uh, we have a lot of data on homelessness, um, and Insights is a tool that uh, brings that data to life um, by creating data visualizations, you know, things like charts, um, things that we can use as educational tools uh, in the community specifically, and most importantly for uh, local decision makers um, in the way of education and advocacy around uh, how we can improve the homeless response system at large. Um, just really excited as I am every day, kind of rushing into the office here. Um, we have so many things going on from, you know, outreach teams going out into the, into the community to meet people where they're at. We got uh, case managers who are traveling to shelters all across both counties uh, and meeting people where they're at there, uh, all working on housing plans that um, 
I really created by the individuals um, in a person-centered way, and we're just kind of alongside them uh, in a supportive way to make sure they're aware of all resources and that we can hopefully uh, uh, help them with their housing goals as quick as possible. Um, we have people, you know, reviewing data. We have our distribution center uh, on site. We have staff who are coordinating housing referrals. Um, just so many great things um, going on that I'm always proud to be a part of. Um, our team continues to, to really uh, grow, um, which is unfortunate in some ways because it means the need is growing, but I, I trust our team and I, I trust the, the process that we have, but also like the philosophy around the work that we do, why we do it, um, and making sure that we're doing it in a way that actually meets people's needs. Because um, what comes up a lot um, specifically in, in nonprofits, human services, and, and charity work um, is the risk of, you know, something called toxic charity where, you know, you, you begin to question who's, who's actually benefiting. Um, and if that is um, not the people who are actually in need of the resources that are being supported by programs, if they're not benefiting most, um, then that probably means that the programs are designed by people who are um, not in tune to or not actively listening to what people in the community are, are actually facing um, and what they need and in the, in the ways that they need it. Um, so, you know, we really try and continue to do a great job with that. Almost at the office now, our office is located in Amityville. Um, kind of just a quick story, which is kind of cool about that. When I started with the coalition, we had just moved into this building. It was a former uh, army base and uh, we moved in and um, we were uh, kind of gifted uh, the building um, to be used for continual work to uh, support uh, local veterans and people experiencing homelessness in the community. Um, and we've been there ever since. Um, we have some offices that house all of our different teams there. And there's also some other nonprofits that are on site. And right behind uh, our office building, um, there are 60 units of, really the units are, are quite stunning. Um, they're, they're very nice units. Um, it's housing for formerly homeless veterans, uh, 60 different units. Um, so 60 households uh, where the, the veteran uh, and in some cases uh, family members as well had experienced homelessness. Uh, and then we're able to quickly get connected to resources like counseling programs, uh, transitional housing, vouchers, um, and different supports uh, that they needed. Um, and now many of them uh, work for or, or volunteer uh, with us at the coalition. Um, so it's kind of nice that things come full, full circle in that way. Um, and in many ways, it's people like that who are really the leaders um, within the homeless response space and trying to figure out the, the solutions to homelessness because we know that those closest to understanding um, the challenges or the problems associated with um, what people are going through often will have the best knowledge and uh, insight in terms of uh, what the best solutions are or how we do better. So about to head into work now. Uh, it's nine o'clock on the dot, so I'm going to rush in. Uh, so I am not late. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing over here. And we hope to share what we're doing with more people and and hopefully kind of grow the community commitment to understanding what's happening with homelessness here and then seeking to minimize um, the, the, the amount of people that have to experience homelessness, um, experience associated traumas, and uh, get them back to, to, to thriving um, and being a part of our community in the way that uh, they can be and, and of course they want to be. Uh, so, so long for now, more to come.